What is going on guys? Panther here bringing you our APA Wi-Fi Season 1 Week 3 battle against uh, Phantom Base and the New York Cosmogs. So um, Tyler here is a great battler. He is 2-0 currently. We are sitting at 2-0 currently um, ahead of our respective division um, along with Tyler. I believe Tyler is actually tied for the lead in his. I think he is in the same division with um, the Dallas Star Youths who are also 2-0. So going into this battle, we know it's going to be really tough. Um, just looking at his team over there, um, you know, you, you know the big Tini's coming uh, every week. Um, so I, I brought Melodic and Arcanine, um, kind of as my big Tini answers. Um, both of them intimidate Arcanine uh, defensive. Uh, then with Crunch as well, uh, just for that. Um, I had a good feeling that the Scarmore would the Scarmore would come just for the fact that I do have Sand and Excadrill. Um, so that was his best uh, answer to um, to my uh, to my Excadrill. Um, predicted the Hydreigon to come just because Hydreigon is such a threat. I predicted a uh, Choice Scarf variant. Um, so I kind of had to go with a mixed defensive spread on the Melodic. Um, I was pretty bulky on the specially def defensive side. Then I believe I was, I may have been calm. Yeah, I think I was calm um, to help me take that thing on a little bit better. He had the Mian Chow. Um, didn't particularly expect the Mian Chow or anything, but when I saw it, I assumed it was Choice Scarf. I um, did not expect the Rhyperior, uh, but I did expect the Floor just just to, just to help take care of my Latios. Um, so just looking at the teams here, um, I am Flame War Melodic. Um, that is also a um, specially defensive set. Flame War Melodic worked really well this week, and I wanted it to um, get the Flame War boost again so it could help take on some of his... Um, some of his physical attackers. So I wanted to go ahead and lead it um, and just kind of go from there with it. So let's go ahead and jump into the battle here and we will see how this one uh, this one turned out. So um, we ended up bringing um, an offensive Latios with Soul Dew. I already told you we've got the Flame Ward Melodic. We've got an SD Mega Pinsir. Uh, we have the um, we have a Shuka <laughs> Excadrill. It's actually supposed to be an um, Okaberry Excadrill. We have a Life Warp Gengar, and then we have a defensive uh, Arcanine. So I um, I lead with my Melodic. So this is actually pretty important here. Now I lead with my, my Melodic. Just wanted to kind of scout and see what kind of set he was. Didn't want to stay in and take the Bolt Strike and get knocked out without having that Flame Orb boost. So he goes for the U-turn here. And I had actually, I looked away from my DS at this portion. And so this is actually my first time seeing that it actually only did 100. Um, it, only, it only took me down to 187. So it only did 10 damage. Um, I thought it took me down to 181, um, so I actually calped, and I, I thought this thing was banned at, um, at this point. So I'm assuming Victini's banned, um, which you'll find out later that it actually is not. Um, so he's, he, I, I'm thinking he's choice banned. I already have that down on my notes and everything like that, so just keep that in mind. Um, so he, he brings in Hydreigon. Uh, I kind of want to scout out and see the set. don't want to stay in in case this thing's choice specs or life orb. Um, if it's a scarf, I can eat a Draco, but if not, I can't. So I see that damage, and I know he's got to be the Specs or Life Orb. I see the Life Orb recoil. Um, he can't knock me out on um, the following turn with a um, with another Draco. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay in and get my uh, Recover off, knowing that um, he could bring in something else right here. So I get my Recover off, and you know I'm, I'm back up to almost full. I've got my Flame Orb off as well with my Lodic. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in a pretty good position with that. So he brings up the floor just. I am thinking he just wants to throw off a Moonblast. Um, so I want to go ahead and go out into my Excadrill. And turns out that he does, in fact, throw off the Moonblast. Um, that was the best thing on my team I had to actually take the Moonblast. So, you know, we, we, you see we take that decently well. Only taking the uh, 45 damage. Um, so I picked him to go into Scarmore here and actually pull a double out into my Gengar. Um, so, you know, I had already decided before this match even started that I was going to be really aggressive early game with that Scarmore. Uh, just because it's extra did really good against his team, but it just minus that Scarmore. So um, I, I predict him actually to switch out here. Um, I do have the Thunderbolt. Um, it wouldn't have knocked him out anyways just because he is um, sturdy. But uh, he's able to get off a big Brave Bird on my Gengar, which is pretty huge because Gengar just really mows through his team. Um, so we get the we get the Curse Body off. That doesn't 
particularly matter um, because we can knock it on the following turn. So here we just throw off another Shadow Ball because he he only has the Hydreigon as a resist to it. I already know it's Life Orb, so I can knock it out with Dazzling Gleam on the following turn. Um, he goes out here into the Rhyperior. So we'll hit the Rhyperior with the Shadow Ball. And with that damage, um, I'm calculating to try to figure out what the damage was, and I couldn't figure it out exactly. So I'm assuming that thing was Assault Vest. Um, excited to see um, Tyler's team builder video just to, so I can figure out what that Rhyperior was. Um, he, he predicts me to go out into Melodic, so he pulls a good, good double right back out into the Scarmore here. <clears throat> he may have actually been scouting for Energy Ball or something like that there, which would have done a tremendous amount to him. Um, but I did not have the energy ball. I had T-Bolt, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, and the Sludge Wave. So, you know, I didn't expect it to be um, Assault Vest like that, if it turns out that's what it is. So I um, I withdraw my Melodic here. I, I predict him to recover, actually. He goes straight out into um, into the Florges. So I actually um, go for a Calm Mind here. I, I predict him to... Um, to, to go for like the HP Fire or something like that, predicting my Excadrill to come in. And um, if you went for HP Fire, um, the Moonblast, you know, only does half. And I can, I can, I can two-hit KO it with the Psy Shock. He does get the special attack drop, though, which puts me in a bad position because now my Psy Shock's not going to be doing anywhere near as much. So I'm forced to uh, withdraw there back out into the Excadrill because I know he's going to be forced to throw off the Moonblast again. So a little bit of unfortunate luck there for... Um, for Latios, but you know that's that's part of the game. So um, throws off the Moon Blast down to 101 HP. Gets the gets the special attack drop on Excadrill, which is huge. Just kidding. Um, so uh, here um, I, I'm pretty sure he, he's going to go out into Scarmory, but I, I think I just throw off the Iron Head anyway, just because Floor just is so annoying. No, okay. So I take the opportunity to set up my Stealth Rocks. So um, rocks are here. Um, if he wants to defog them, that's fine, because he's going to be forced to either choose to roost or to defog here in, in in my eyes. So I actually do not predict him to get his rocks up, which is exactly what he does here. He goes ahead and prioritizes getting his stealth rocks up. So he gets up the stealth rocks, and I make a mistake here. Um, I make a prediction here because I can two hit KO the floor just with Psy Shock. I have HP Fire for the Scarborn. I could have just went for the safe HP Fire and knocked this thing out, but I do go for the Psy Shock. So unfortunately that does not cut it. And you know, we don't end up doing anywhere basically nothing to the Scarborn. And he just whirlwinds this out to um to phase us around. So he brings out Arcanon, uh which is, you know, uh it, it's a good matchup, but unfortunately I do have to take the twenty five percent to the stealth rocks. So I don't want to play around with the Scarmore anymore. I want I want to free things up for my Excadrill. So I just go straight for the Flare Blitz here to um to see if I can uh, to see if he wants to stay in while I take uh take the Scarmore. I've I've already over predicted a little bit with um with my Latios. I didn't want to uh, do that again. So I just go ahead fire off the Flare Blitz. We take out the Scarmore. So we get rid of that thing, which is huge. In my opinion, anyways, um, because that that opens the door for my Excadrill, like I said, and then my Mega Pinsir as well. So Mega Pinsir is looking really good here the rest of this matchup, uh, especially at this point, because I think okay, I'll, if the only thing he's got that can outspeed it is is that Choice Scarf and Yin Shao, because I still have my mindset that it was Scarf, and I'm thinking Victini's banned at this point, so I'm thinking I'm in pretty good shape. So um, I'm. I shouldn't have done made this play there. I should have sacked off probably Gengar here at this point. But I switch him on Melodic on the uh, on the Draco Meteor. And as you can see, this is gonna do a tremendous amount to Melodic. And also it's gonna take the it's gonna take rocks, it's gonna take this big Draco Meteor, and then it's gonna take the burn damage as well. I, I should have kept Melodic around. Um I, I really just should have should have sacked off the Gengar and then brought in my Latios to um to force him to make a play. Uh, cause I could either Draco Meteor or I could Psy Shock, forcing him to a 50 50. Um, but as you can see, he's going to knock out my Melodic with the next Draco Meteor, which is which is unfortunate because, you know, Melodic was. A, I, I needed Melodic to help me deal with the Mian Shao, help me deal with the Rhyperior, and then help me deal with that Victini as well. So I go out, he's minus four. 
And Tyler does a great job here. Um, I, I thought a long time about this because this thing gets rock slide. Um, I think I almost went down to my turn. So I could either kill this thing with the close combat or um, just straight up SD. So I figured let's 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 go for it. We actually uh, had some scheduling conflicts and had to do this game kind of late at night. So, you know, I may not have been my best mindset here for this, but I go ahead and get the SD up. I, I actually go ahead and calc too and see, you know, if I can sweep at this point. I actually thought I had the sweep here with the SD. Um, I calc this thing with Koba. I actually did calc this thing with Koba Berry to see if the, um, the quick attack killed. The quick attack killed if he didn't have any HP investment or anything like that. Um, but you see it is actually Koba. So he actually EV'd this thing for it to live. Um, that So that was a huge crit there. So um, definitely unfortunate there on Tyler's part. But, you know, we, we, we got very lucky there. So um, I, I, I thought I 100% swept here. I thought this thing was banded. So I go straight for the return. And huge mistake. This thing's choice scarfed. He knocks me out with the V-create. So it's really unfortunate because I could have went out into my Arcanine there. So um, that that turn one not paying um, not paying attention on my part and and actually thinking that this thing was banded as opposed to being scarfed, uh, you know, just really put me in a bad position here. So uh, calls me my pincer. Um, I think we're tied four four right now. I've knocked out the uh, Scarmory and the Inshao. He's knocked out the um, the melodic and pincer. Um, so I bring out my Latios to threaten him out. I predict the switch into floor just and make it double into my Excadrill. So I go, went into Latios um, to force him out because I could have dropped the Draco there and killed killed the Victini. Um, predicted him to go into the floor just and then I can freely go into my Excadrill and proceed to pick up a kill here. So I can EQ, um, which actually I think that's exactly what I do is just go ahead and fire off the EQ just in case he wanted to go out into the Victini. But Victini is kind of his win con at this point, so I know he's probably not going to do that. So I just go ahead and fire off the EQ anyways. It's going to do a lot to the floor. Just um, I'm adamant. Um, but he actually he actually told me after the battle he thought I was Choice Scarf uh, at this point. So um, he was really you know having to play around me. So he brings back out the Victini. This thing's definitely going to be um, a pain to beat. Luckily I do have Stealth Rocks up the. So it's um it's 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 limiting this thing's switch ends. So I do go out into my Arcanine here to throw off the Intimidate. I um uh, I'm thinking he is going to just go for the V Create here. Just to try to knock out Max Gadrov. I've played like crap up until this point. Got very lucky with the crit and um, you know, left my pins around. I'm sure he was wondering what the heck I was doing when I stayed in um on the Victini, knowing that it um knowing it was um Choice scarf, but like I said, thought it was banned this whole time. Um, but um, as you can see, that V create from Victini really didn't do much just since he has choice scarf. Um, he's he's forced to switch out here, and I can just straight up get off a um, a recover uh, morning sun. Now I could have I could have close combated here because I do have the close combat for the Hydreigon, but he could have easily just went out into the floor just here. Even the floor just can't really do much. It could have maybe got a toxic off on me or something like that. But I'll just go ahead and heal up because I, I need this thing around to take, help take care of this Victini. So this thing basically is about to pick up another kill again. Um, he He's forced us into a bad position. Um, so I go out into my Gengar. I actually didn't think I would live Stealth Rock damage, but surprise, I actually lived the Stealth Rock damage because Gengar actually you know put on a lot of pressure as well at this point in the matchup. So... I uh, sack off the Gengar there. Um, it, if I known he would have lived, I probably would have sacked off Latios actually. But now I can go into Latios and force this thing out. Um, I've already made a couple of doubles um, with Latios, so here I just decide to just drop the Draco, hoping he would stay in. Um, and, and thankfully he does. He does stay in. Um, I didn't want to side shock here and him um, him actually stay in. So we pick off the Hydreigon here. And it's three to three now. So we have Latios and Arcanine and Excadrill versus the, the Florges. I'm um, sorry, it's actually two to three. Florges and Victini. I forgot we just knocked out. Um, we knocked out Rapiri earlier. So he goes out into um, Victini. I switch into my Arcanine 
and um, is this is this where he pulls out the psychic? So it turns out he's actually um, a mixed Victini, mixed choice Scarf Victini, which is great prep on his part. He does have the psychic, does massive damage to me. Thankfully, I am leftovers because it puts me in range to um, to have a chance to live the next one. So I didn't calc it because I, I was forced really to stay in here at this point. Um, I'm, I'm at, you know, it takes me all the way down to 5%, but I just go for the crunch because I want this thing going. He could have got the spadef drop on the following turns. So I don't want to play around with any of that. I wanted to go ahead and pick this thing off. I don't have the e-speed, so Arcanine comes in clutch, um, living there on 5 HP, and we're able to knock out Victini. All he has left is the Florges. And um, I, I don't want this thing to be called Mind Floor just and have any type of shot at winning just in case he by some miracle lives the um, Iron Head from my Excadrill. So I, um, I, I, I go hard just straight out into my, um, my Excadrill. He throws off the Moon Blast just trying to pick up the kill on the Arcanine. And as you can see here, he could actually kill me on the following turn. Um, with the with the moon blast um but i'm going to outspeed and be able to go for the iron head here so a couple things could have happened um if th this was a roll to kill um we, we we knock it out we pick up the kill there um on on the floor just we end up picking up the 3 0 win at, at that point in the game though we could have um with the iron head let's say he you know let's say we didn't kill with us so we got a lower roll well, then we just go um, back out into Latios. My question at that point, though, was was did Latios die to Stealth Rock? So, um, you know, Arcanine was obviously at 5 HP. Latios was very low. I think he was like at 37 HP or something like that. So I think I, I, it would have been close um, if I would have died to the rock damage or not. So it was a 3-0 game, but it was a very, very close game. Um, so don't let the score fool you here. You know, this is a um, battle against somebody that is uh, an amazing battler. Um, so, you know, we're really happy to pull out the win in this one, even though we did get um, rather lucky with that crit with the um, the quick attack on, on Mian Chao. Obviously, the battle would have played out a whole lot differently. I wish I would have um, been paying more attention and and not assumed that Victini was banded. Because then I probably would have played that a little differently there. Um, I may have sacked something off, or I may have just straight up quick attacked it. And in actuality, if I would have known that, um, if I would have known that the Victini was banded or was scarfed, I probably would never have SD'd with Pincer. I probably would have just straight up returned uh, with the Scar more going because I could have two at of the floor just. If you went out into the Rhyperior, I could have just close combated on the following turn from the range it was at. So, you know, it, it, we would have we would have played a whole lot differently. I, I hate that it played out the way it did, but you know, we always always had the chance of uh, meeting Tyler again in the finals. So, thanks for watching again, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, be sure to uh, check out Tyler's channel. It'll be in the, the description down below. And um, until next time, guys. Thanks again for watching.